Welcome to this session on Copy and Modify. So in this session, we're going to fairly efficiently create new geometry. We're going to create the, the two office floors by simply copying and modifying the geometry that was previously modeled for the lobby floor. So I've got my A floor lobby file. I'm just going to come over here to the File tab and do a Save As. And we're going to call this A floor Office 1. and select Save. And you can check up here on the header, you can see we're now in A Floor Office 1, even though of course it looks the same. First thing I'm going to do is come down to my Floor Selector and change that to Floor 1, so that I remember I want to make sure I model everything on the correct plane. And you'll see it right away that the grid moves up to that plane. So we want to reuse these walls and the windows and so forth, so what we want to do is move everything up to the new floor plane. So again, we're going to use our, our selection tool and I'm just going to, again, select everything. I'm going to right press and select move. And then I'm going to enter a start point. Right now I need to move up and my compass is rotated in that top orientation, which is really only letting me move it along the floor plane. So what I want to do is rotate that compass. So again, shortcut key and type in F and it'll rotate the compass so we can move in the Z direction vertically. I like to hit my enter key so I'm locked. So I make sure, you know, my two floors are gonna line up. You don't wanna just get a little bit off or anything. And then we can just type in that floor to floor height. So it was 15 feet or 4,500 millimeters. So I'm just going to type that in and then left click to accept. And then a right click will reset. And now we can see that we've moved all the walls up and they're sitting now on that same plane as the grid. So the perimeter of the building is the same. They're gonna stack, so that's just fine. We could leave the windows in the same place. One thing we know is we won't need a, this door here. So again, we could write press on that door. We'll have our context sensitive menu. And in this case, we just need to delete the element. And then we could come back and put a window or, or, or curtain wall in there. Now, one other thing we need to do, if you remember when we looked at our, our floor manager, that the lobby floor had a height of 15 feet or 4,500 millimeters, and that's how tall we made these walls. But the office floor is 14 feet or 4,200 millimeters, so we need to adjust the height of our walls. So I'm going to come up to the Modify tab, and there's actually this Modify Wall tool. I'm going to go ahead and select that. So we can modify a wall. This actually, we could do the height, um, we could do the base elevation, we could do the, the width, or even extend a linear form. So we're just going to do the Modify Height, different methods, right? But we're just going to do the add distance because we know we know we want it to be 14 feet or one foot less. Um, and so in terms of mode, we could do absolute, which allows us to put in an absolute height, like 14 feet. Or we could do relative, which would allow us to, you know, subtract one foot from the wall. Either one of those ways will work. I'm going to actually select the absolute and just select 14 feet. Now you may notice that, you know, our jip and our, our stud are actually lower than the brick and that's fine. It's going to keep that relationship. So it's the brick that's going to get changed and then everything else is going to adjust relative to that. And that's just, that's the way that particular compound wall was set up. So then I can just come and start selecting walls and we can see how the height is changing. Now, one other thing to note as I'm doing this, there's a, another lock here on the interface, which is called the graphic group lock. So it's possible to take elements and group them together as a graphic group. And then when that lock is on, they're treated as a group. When the lock is off, they're treated as independent or individual elements. 
So these compound walls, the, the walls that have different layers to them, are actually a graphic group. And so when that lock is on, if I make a change to that wall, it affects all layers of the wall. So that's what we're doing right now. We've got that lock on, and as I select any piece of that wall, it's going to adjust the entire wall. If that lock was off, I could actually adjust it layer by layer. So I'm just going to go around and get all the walls, and we should be good now. So now our walls are the correct height for this particular floor. I'm going to go ahead and do a save settings. That'll save my, my floor selection there. And then we're just going to do another save as of this file, and we're going to create the next office floor. So I'm going to again come over to my tab, select save as, and I'm going to call this a floor office two. So again, Look at your header, make sure you're in the right file, a floor office two. I changed my floor selector to floor two. Again, I'm gonna control F, so I save that setting. And we'll see the grids now up here at the top of the wall. So we're just gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm just going to select everything. I'm gonna right press and select move. Pick a start point. Rotate my compass with the F key in, and then enter to lock it on that Z axis. And this time we're going to move 14 feet, right? Because that's our floor to floor head. And right click to reset, and then a data point in the view to deselect everything. And now we've got this floor modeled at the correct height. And we've already removed the door, we've already adjusted the height, so we could really just leave this floor, assuming we want a brick exterior all the way up the building. But as an optional exercise, if you wish, we could do a change wall type here and change the material on this second office floor. So again, we're going to select all the walls. And let me show you another way. I'd mentioned there were several ways to select items in your model. I'm gonna go up to this items tab on our Explorer. And you can see now it's starting to populate with some of the things that are in our model. And so if I expand the walls, you'll see, right, we have all of our walls. And I could just, using my shift or control key, select all the walls. And so that's actually selecting them in the model. I could come up to my Modify Properties tool on the ribbon. And so you can see now, it's highlighted all those walls in the model, not the windows or the curtain wall, and I can modify that particular wall. So rather than this example brick, there's a couple other options in here. So one is that there's a corrugated metal panel, and there's also just a kind of a regular metal panel. You could use either one of those. I'm going to select the corrugated metal panel. Again, because I'm changing the actual catalog item, I'm going to get the second dialog and I have to determine which values to keep the old values, which values to do the new values. For sure we want the height, we don't want to change the height of our wall, so we're going to leave that at 14. Probably everything else we can go with the new value because it's data that, that matches up with that corrugated metal panel. So I'm going to select OK and then a left click data point in the model to accept that. Now you may notice it looks like our windows kind of got buried in the wall there. It sometimes happens when you switch wall types, but we can go now and we'll just grab all those windows using the same item type. And we'll do a modify properties. Essentially, we just need to, to modify something. Uh, usually an easy one is maybe the sense distance. So I'm just gonna change it slightly, make it one foot two inches, and then left click in the view. And that's gonna force those windows to, to perforate the new wall. And left click in the view, so there we are. Another option that works sometimes is just to, to move it out of the plane of the wall and then back in. So I'm going to move it out by five feet. 
and then just move it back in five feet. And now you can see we've got our, our curtain wall there. So now we've created those three floors of the building, at least the exterior shell. The last thing we're going to do is create a sloped roof for the top of the building. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.